Sean Richards, the leader of the People's Action Movement, called on Prime Minister Dr. Timothy Harris, the leader of the People's Labour Party, to halt immediately the construction of a prison complex and take the matter into national consultation. The construction of the prison became publicly known when Richards carried out an on-site social media objection to the prison being built. Officials at the press conference said there was no official groundbreaking ceremony as is customary with projects of such magnitude. According to Richards, speaking at the 27 June Joint PAM CCM press conference, the prison, while previously approved in cabinet and being one of several important projects approved, should not be given priority over more pressing social and economic needs of the country at this time. He brought into question that the prison listed in the government's 2021 estimates at $88 million had escalated to $2.4 billion. PAM CCM is pushing back on unfair, undemocratic and fiscally irresponsible policies. That is why we are calling on the Harris administration to immediately halt the $2.4 billion Harris prison project and begin a period of national consultation with the people who elected you into office to represent their interest. Go back to the people to find out if in these challenging times, when they're trying to put food on their tables and send their children to school and secure better health care for their parents and grandparents, when the young people are searching for hope and opportunities, when the creatives among us are calling for avenues to showcase and market their talents, when food security is lacking and farmers and fisher folks are trying to find markets for their produce, I urge the Harris administration to consult with these folks and ask them where does the new $2.4 billion Harris Prison Complex stand on the list of priorities, or does it? SKN Newsline understands the prison project is being funded through the sale of passports under the Citizenship by Investment Program involving a Chinese company. Glenn Bart reporting for SKN Newsline. There seems to be a tussle developing between the St. Kitts Music Festival Committee and the Eastern Caribbean Collective Organization for Music Rights, ECHO. After our story on Friday, which reflected a response from ECHO to Music Festival Chairman Damien Hobson, the committee is now arguing that ECHO has not presented documentation to prove that it is the authorized agency to collect licensing payments on behalf of artists. At the Music Festival press conference on Saturday, Public Relations Official for the Festival Committee, Val Henry, disclosed that the lawyers for the Music Festival Committee had written to ECHO to provide the relevant documentation, and this was not done up to the time of the press conference on Saturday. ECHO wrote on the 24th of January, 2020, asking for settlement of fees for 2019. All lawyers responded, but before that, on the 22nd of January, our lawyers wrote <clears throat> to ECHA indicating a number of things. One, asking for ECHA's legal standing in the country, indicating to ECHA that it is not registered with the Ministry of Finance, nor with the Inland Revenue Department, Thus, it has no legal standing in the country. ECHO promised to respond and to provide the necessary information that was provided. To this date, they have not provided the information. SK Newsline asked Mr. Henry if the decision to request the information from ECHO, despite having paid licensing fees prior to 2019, was a change of policy by the Music Festival Committee. The lawyers, however, for the St. Kitts Music Festival assured ECHO that 
The festival is prepared to consider working with ECHO and cooperating with ECHO once ECHO is properly established and instituted to operate and to carry out any such remit in the country of St. Kitts and Nevis. Is it a new policy then of the committee to ascertain the issues that you outlined before moving forward? Is that dependent on the, any further payments, future payments? Is that dependent on ECHO responding to the claims of the committee or the questions that the committee have raised? My formal answer to you would be that our lawyers await the response from ECHO and our lawyers would guide us accordingly. But just to say, not to trivialize, but just to say, I don't think you would appreciate me coming to your doorstep demanding fees to hand over to someone else without some evidence that I am so constituted legally. However, ECHO in a press release on Saturday said the statement from the committee is misleading. It said ECHO has been registered with the Registrar of Companies as an external company in the Federation of St. Christopher and Nevis. All of ECHO's constitutional documents, including the Articles of Incorporation and bylaws of the company, have been filed with the Register of Companies in accordance with the laws of St. Kitts and Nevis and are available for inspection by any person at the Financial Services Regulatory Commission. The organization added that all information regarding how license fees are computed and distributed are and have always been available on its website www.echorights.com. Meanwhile, President of the Professional Association for Creativity and Entertainment, Pace, as in Bailey, while hosting his morning show, Island Tea, on WinFM on Friday, spoke about the issue where he lamented the treatment of creatives in St. Kitts and Nevis. Like, I literally have been at events we are, like, in Trinidad, cut come, mm -hmm. cut comes with the injunction. Like, tell you, Look at that. Yeah, police come, say, boss, they ain't pay the you know. Promoter got to go outside. Settle up, whatever they settle up, the police come back in and be like, okay, yeah, 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 music, come on. Mm -hmm. DJ, yeah, let's go. <laughs> like, mm. like, it, it's, 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 it, it a weird me out. Like, I don't understand, like, why the always feel like singing is just so backwards, man. <laughs> like, I, like, I'm tired of it, man. Like, we just always seem so backward and oh, I just dear. don't understand. Like, I don't understand. The thing that has bothered me for, for, with, with the music festival in particular, or like the fact that this is something that we're dealing with with the music festival in particular, mm -hmm. is that this is government run. Like this ain't no, True. this ain't a private entity. Like you could say, like some 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 rogue promoter, or maybe just have an issue with whatever. Mm -hmm. And like this is the government. <laughs> so like if the government ain't paying the bill, ain't paying ain't, ain't paying the license, and it, but then turn around and say they care about creatives. Like how how you could convince us that? Yeah. Like, and lo let it not be lost to me that I'm sitting in a radio station and no radio stations in sync it's compliant, eh? None. <laughs> Including the government radio station. SK Newsline will continue to monitor this developing story. Andre Huey, SKN Newsline. When you're looking to sell, buy, rent, or manage a property, your answer has to be Diamond Real Estate and Management Sync Kits. Dreams. They provide oversight of real estate and physical property in St. Kitts and Nevis, perform regular maintenance, utility payments, and safety checks to ensure your property is well kept. Dreams manages and optimizes your rental listing, recruits tenants, and much more. Looking to sell that parcel of land or property, or dreaming of owning your own? Trust Dreams under the leadership and experience of the CEO, Velma Merchant. Many can attest to her professionalism and customer service. Diamond Real Estate Management and Kits. Call 663-7326 or visit their office at 15 Shadwell Industrial Estate. Making your real estate dreams come true. The SKN Newsline website now offers you more news. Log on to www.sknnewsline.com for local, regional and international news. You can also watch the latest newscast and keep abreast with news in sports. All from sknnewsline.com. That's www.sknnewsline.com. News at your fingertips. When visiting St. Martin, you want clean, affordable accommodations. You need Midtown Motel in the heart of Phillipsburg, a place where you can relax, take a stroll on Gray Bay Beach, and that provides you easy access to great shopping. Midtown Motel, located on Front Street, Phillipsburg, St. Martin. 
call Midtown Motel at 721-542-0614 and book your stay today. Come get your fresh smoothie at Master Make Smoothie in Bastyr at two locations, the Bastyr Public Market or under the arch at the National Museum. Get a fresh, all-natural, healthy and tasty smoothie with flavors of your choice. Master Make Smoothie knows the flavors that you like and mixes it all up for you the way you want it. Master Make Smoothie, two locations, the Bastyr Public Market or under the arch at the National Museum. Master, Master Make Smoothie, smoothie. Always, always the real, real thing. thing, always, always smoothie. smoothie. Nestled between evergreen mountains and the Caribbean Sea on the island of St. Kitts is the Millhouse Guest House and Convention Center with breathtaking views, a rugged, beautiful shoreline and immaculate manicured gardens make this the perfect location for your holiday, event or wedding. With a large convention center, apartments with balconies providing stunning views, and a secluded cottage for larger family groups or honeymooning couples looking for some privacy. We have something for everyone. Book your stay at www.millhouseskn.com or visit our Facebook page, the Millhouse Guest House and Convention Center, an oasis of tranquility. The final night of the St. Kitts Music Festival saw throngs of music fans descending upon the Kim Collins Athletic Stadium to see the top acts billed for that night. Fans were impressed with the performances of Christopher Martin, Beres Hammond and Rotimi. The two local acts, Vanel Powell and Byron Messiah, were the first two to perform and they each delivered an impressive set, much to the delight of their fans. I've been performing all of my life, but this has actually been the biggest stage that I've played so far in my career, and it's a really amazing feeling. So even though this is my first music festival, it's not my last. You'll be seeing a lot more of Vinyl Powell. The people around me, I, the creations of God as well. I mean, God made a lot of people that came along my journey and showed me the good and the bad, and those were like lessons and still accomplishments and um, achievements because Good is bad and bad is good, so yeah, I, I just owe it all to God and the people around me, my team as well, my management, you know, my friends as well who keep on pushing me out when I'm trying to give up on the music, they always tell me, yo, nah, you can't give up, dog, like, for the people that, for the people that see something that I don't see, because up to now I really don't see what people be seeing, but a lot of people will tell me, yo, you really have something, so... Yeah, we just go for the movement still, you know. Music festival activity is officially closed on Sunday with White Sands, which has become a permanent fixture on the St. Kitts Music Festival calendar in recent years. Andre Huey, SKN Newsline. The St. Kitts Music Festival 2022 delivered again on a strong second night with performances by Chanel Muir, Imark, Dejour, Ashanti, Maxi Priest, Sean Paul, Highlight, and rapper Wale. The night was somehow tarnished by a concert goer who somehow got on the stage during Chanel Muir's performance. SK Newsline understands that the fan was removed from the venue and Chanel, while initially flustered, proceeded with her duties thereafter. SK Newsline was also informed that the security breach was corrected on Friday night. We also spoke to some of the artists after their performances. Uh, if you ask me, I would say it was awesome because we've been home for a minute and I, I couldn't wait to, to bless the stage and perform with that band, you know, the full production. It was, it was amazing, if you ask me. I know you guys were a bit early on, you know, you guys basically opened the music festival night two. But what, based on what you guys saw on the night one, how does it make you guys feel that music festival is back and then you're actually still, you know, people are still coming out and, and, and wanting to enjoy themselves? You want to answer this one? Well, I think it's a surreal um, experience. I think it's, it's a good thing. Um, seeing so much people, so much fans, so much supporters um, back out enjoying themselves. Feeling real, real great, no lie. Because it's like, no one's going out for the artists. But me, myself, for the artists. So no, we really got a chance to prove yourself. It's so nice that just up, yeah, come out and really show that we was really missing this. So yeah. The hospitality here has been amazing. The, the view, the island itself is beautiful and you know ever since I landed foot here it's been a great experience and the promoters and the whole festival and everything is, has been a great, I can't even explain it, it was a one in a million experience. 
my inspiration is people like yourself, the audience, the people. The, um, the inspiration comes from the Most High, but at the same time, you know, you have to have a support, an energy that also helps you to bring, bring the crowd. that thing together. Yeah. You know, and then when you when you get back an energy from the crowd, then it just kind of makes you feel like, boy, you, you're doing so. I'm Andre Huey for SKN Newsline. If you're looking for a place to host that special event, conference, meeting, social event, party, whatever the occasion, your best option is the Millhouse Convention Center in Palmetto Point, St. Kitts. Located on the picturesque Garvey's Estate, the Millhouse Guest House Convention Center has enough space for outdoor events overlooking the Caribbean Sea. If you're looking indoors, the center is equipped with amenities needed to make your event a success. And by combining both spaces, you're sure to have a memorable event, no matter the occasion. Call the offices at Millhouse Guest House and Convention Center to book your next event on simply the most beautiful place in St. Kitts. Call 668-1392. Millhouse Convention Center at Garvey's Estate, Palmetto Point, St. Kitts. Making your event memorable. It's the new and improved SK Newsline Android mobile app. With the SK Newsline app, you can watch your news reports, the SK Newsline newscast, sports, special features, and so much more. You can also send us a WhatsApp or call us directly. Go in the Google Play Store, search SK Newsline, and download the app today. The SK Newsline mobile app. News on the go. An open interactive event can be described as Tremendous, effective On power with any conference around the world From exhibitions to trade shows Corporate events to product launches From press events to political functions We are the secret sauce behind events that make you go Wow We've staged multiple world-class events in the Caribbean and developed the skill to deliver quality in every detail, whether the event is live or fully virtual, or maybe even somewhere in between. At Open Interactive, we got your events covered. Get your free quotation today at www.madebyopen.com. Grenada's ninth Prime Minister Deacon Mitchell was sworn in at 2 p.m. on Friday during an official ceremony at the Grenada Trade Center. In the company of friends, family, associates, and members of the National Democratic Congress, Governor General Dame Cecilia Grenade administered the oath of office and presented the new Prime Minister with his instruments of appointment. I, Deacon Amos Thomas Mitchell, I do swear that I will bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, according to law. So help me God. I, Deacon Amos Thomas Mitchell, do swear that I will faithfully execute the office of Prime Minister without fear or favor affection or ill will, and that in the execution of the functions of that office, I will honor, uphold, and preserve the Constitution of Grenada. So help me God. Delivering his first speech as Prime Minister, Mitchell said he now brings the same passion as a lawyer to his task as Prime Minister. His next charge is to select a group of people to serve as members of Cabinet. Ahead of us in the coming days, uh, including the appointment of a cabinet, uh, we will seek to swiftly do so. Naturally, there will be changes that will be made at some government levels. Uh, we will seek to do so in a transparent and open manner. The key criteria will be merit. We will not move forward or prosper as a people. If the sole basis for job selection, for promotion, for the award of contracts, is party loyalty or personal loyalty. 
if we continue with this approach, we will be doing ourselves and the several generations of Grenadians to come a huge disfavor. And so under my leadership, I intend to break that vicious cycle of nepotism. He served notice that there will be necessary changes to be made within the various ministries and state-owned bodies, and that positions will be awarded based on merit. I want to assure you, whether it's Nawasa, Grenlick, the Port Authority, the Airports Authority, Gravel and Concrete, MNIB, whatever body or institution it is, we need fresh, new faces with innovative ideas. Prime Minister Mitchell also spoke about a private conversation held between himself and immediate former Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell. And for the record, let me dispel any myth. He initiated the call. Uh, so there is no suggestion that he was not magnanimous. And I want to publicly thank him for doing so. And he indicated that he wanted to ensure that we spoke privately before he made any public statements. Cherry and Blackman Stephen, GBN News. Meanwhile, despite the narrow margin of defeat, there are mixed views about the impact of the loss on Senator Johnson Smith's role as Foreign Affairs Minister going forward. While some believe the margin is an indication of the strength of Kamina Johnson Smith's campaign for Commonwealth Secretary General, there's also a belief that the loss may cause more harm than good. For former Jamaican ambassador to the United Nations, Curtis Ward, an international campaign loss is always unfortunate, but he believes it may be more devastating for Mrs. Johnson Smith, given her role as Foreign Affairs Minister. Because she has to interact with all these foreign ministers from all these countries that voted against her. And in doing so, in representing Jamaica, she will always have doubts in her mind as to whether or not she received their support, given that the voting was uh, by secret ballot. In spite of the many questions in Jamaica leading up to the election, opposition member Julian Robinson believes Mrs. Johnson Smith's efforts are commendable. It is disappointing for Kamina and Jamaica that she lost. I think she put up a strong campaign to come so close. And we wish her well as an individual. She will still, I think, remain as our Minister of Foreign Affairs. And, um, you know, Jamaica, as I said, will be disappointed, but it was a strong campaign. Considering the slim margin of defeat, there are already suggestions that Mrs. Johnson Smith should consider running for the post again in 2024 at the end of Baroness Patricia Scotland's additional two-year tenure. However, Ambassador Ward believes that would be a bad idea. It will be the turn for the African um, candidate to whoever that might be to, to be supported by others. So I don't see how, how she could be successful in the future. I think that would be a big mistake on her part. This is the moment multiple levels of a wood and bamboo stand caved in, turning a popular bull running festival into a tragedy. Several spectators were killed, while others say they were lucky to survive. Eight boxes collapsed structurally. You can already see that it's a wood structure. We were in the ring when we saw this structure falling in a domino effect. I fell from the second floor, and that's how I broke my foot and my right wrist. It was like a game of dominoes. It just swept around and brought all those stands crashing down. Unlike Spanish bullfighting, animals are not killed at festivals known as Coralejas. Members of the public are invited to enter the ring and taunt the animals. There have been many calls to ban the practice. This has come up uh, legally in Colombia before. Bogota has banned the practice before it was overturned by the Constitutional Court several years ago. In Cincelejo, the event that he's referencing, a uh, northern city in Colombia known for these bull festivals in 1980, three levels of the wooden balconies collapsed and left 400 people dead and 4,000 injured. And that town then suspended the festivals for 19 years but then resumed again in 1999 before being suspended again in 2013. So this has been a political issue. 
Some bulls escaped the ring and ran through the streets of El Espinal, injuring bystanders. The incident may prompt the incoming president to regulate the practice, which forms a strong part of many Colombians' cultural identity. But for now, the focus is on treating the wounded and finding out why the stadium collapsed. Barbara Angopa, Al Jazeera. We had a short break this past week in the SKNFA Division 1 Football League, but action resumes this Tuesday at the Warner Park as the regular season winds down. Elko Limited Security Forces United will play Mantab at 6 p.m. on Tuesday, while Connery Fireball International take on Molyneux at 8 p.m. Then on Thursday, Davis Construction Lodge Patriots will play Sandy Point at 6 p.m. and at 8 p.m. Rivers of Living Water play Hard Times United. And finally, on Saturday, the rescheduled matchup between Mantab and Molyneux will be played at 3 p.m. It's tight at the top for a playoff spot. The teams have already decided with Sandy Point in first place with 43 points, Elka Limited Security Forces United in second place with 42 points, Mantab also on 42 points but with a lower goal difference in third place, and Connery Fireball International fourth place with 33 points. The closer challenger to a playoff spot outside the top four is Hard Times United with 26 points. But with only one match remaining from this season, they won't be able to catch up or overtake Connery Fireballs International in fourth spot with 33 points. The two teams that made the Division 1 final in the Final Four playoffs will be promoted to the SKNFA Premier League for next season. Coming off a break on the weekend, the SKNFA Premier League returns this Wednesday at the Warner Park with two matches. Hot Springs Bath United will take on Trafalgar South Stars at 6 p.m. This should be an interesting matchup seeing South Stars at the bottom of the table and only scored once since the restart of the league last month. Relegation is inevitable for South Stars, but they want to end their season on a high note with a win. Bath United, while virtually assured to stay up the season, would want to put a marker down that, that they are for real and their recent wins against Newtown and Saddlers were no fluke. Also on Wednesday at 8.15 p.m., MFCR United Old Road Jets will take on SL Horses St. Paul's United. Old Road is not far off from a playoff spot, eyeing the sixth spot currently held by Connery. With a game in hand on Connery and five points off sixth place, a good result against St. Paul's would certainly help their cause. But Old Road is probably playing St. Paul's at the wrong time. The defending champs are yet to lose a game since the restart and have only one blemish to their Premier League record sitting comfortably at the top of the table with 50 points. They take each game seriously and it's hard to see them dropping the ball in this match. Here are the current SKNFA Premier League stand-ins. Welcome to the SKN Newsline Weather Report. I am Janil Boone. Here is a look at the forecast for St. Kitts and Nevis. detailed weather report visit our website at www.sknnewsline.com